Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. The college football national championship uh, teams have been decided, Alabama and Clemson. Today is uh, Monday, January 4th, and we are going to get some initial thoughts on the, uh, the early lines on this game from Teddy Covers, professional sports handicapper. Teddy Covers, thanks for being with us. All right, Alabama minus seven. The first thing I'm sure everyone is thinking is that Alabama in their last three uh, national championship games have, have crushed the other teams, getting an easy cover each time. Time, uh, you know, we saw what they did against Michigan State, right? A shutout. I actually uh, previewed the, that game with a with a bunch of guys, and I was giving the opinion that we've seen this before. You know, Alabama really steps it up in the big games and winds up getting like margin wins and relatively easy covers over other teams that were before the game thought to be, you know, roughly on equal footing with Alabama, and then it proved not to be true. That's certainly been the case in the three uh, national, last three national championship games Alabama has played. Is there any reason to expect anything different here in uh, their fourth one against Clemson? Well, of course there's a reason to expect okay. something different. Clemson's a different team. Uh, yeah. And there, there's something that's very subtle here that I don't think the betting markets are knowing, and, and certainly the other betters that I've talked to about this game haven't really brought up at all, and it stands out like a sore thumb to me. Alabama, when Nick Saban has had these three weeks plus to prepare, they've killed everybody. You know, as you talked about, the three previous national title wins, the blowout over Michigan State in the semifinals this year. But for the championship game in the modern format, you don't get three weeks to prepare for there an you opponent. Go. You get one week like everybody else. Uh, so that is a legitimate difference that you can look at, say, Alabama's previous titles, they always had the extra time before the one game. This time, the extra time before the one game, sure, it paid off against Sparty. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the other thing that you have to say, Clemson is not Michigan State. You know, Michigan State, let's be honest, they were lucky. They were lucky sure. against Michigan. They were lucky against Ohio State. Uh, I don't know if the win over Iowa was luck or not. It certainly wasn't a thing of beauty. Um, but basically, in their three biggest games of the year in uh, against Big Ten foes, you know, they, they were on the right side of the brakes, let's put it that way. As they tried to step up in class for real against Alabama, that offense just didn't work against the Crimson Tide defense. But Clemson, they're not lucky to be here. You know, Clemson's won every game. Uh, and they've won every game. You know, they, they had, uh, I guess, the tight win over Notre Dame in the rain. Maybe that was a little bit lucky. But they, they, contr they controlled the flow there. Uh, the, and, of course, offensively, Clemson, there's no resemblance between Clemson and Michigan State. Uh, Clemson has an elite level. Not that Michigan State's quarterback play was bad, but their skill position talent is significantly better than that of Michigan State. So when you say Alabama shut down the Spartans, yeah, now they got to do it again if they're going to beat Clemson and beat them by margin in order to cover this number. All right. Well, you know, I'm sure you're aware of this. The very early action in Vegas uh, was all on Alabama, right? It opened uh, very, very early at about four and a half, got quickly bet up to six and then to seven. Uh, you know, I'm guessing that was early sharp action, right? There were no four and a halves. No? No, no, no. I mean, there might, again, there's one offshore book that always opens early and they always open with off market numbers and their limits are really low. Mm -hmm. And None of the pros bet there because you can't get anything down and it influences the market. The bigger books when they opened were all at six and a half or seven. Okay. Uh, and I was surprised at how long the six and a half stayed. I, my initial reaction was you got to get down in Alabama right now. This line is going to go, uh, this line is going to go to seven and who knows how high it'll go afterwards. Right. Uh, but I was surprised at how long those six and a half stuck around. They're all gone now as expected. Uh, and I, uh, We've even seen a couple of seven and a halves pop up. Yeah. Uh, but the fact that those six and a half stayed in the marketplace as long as they did tells me that, at least from a wise guy perspective, this game might get two way action. And I really mm -hmm. thought that all the wise guy money would be on Alabama. I'm not convinced that's going to be the case. All right. And so, where do you, that's my next question is where do you think this one might close? Because uh, we know that the public, uh, you know, many times likes to pile on Alabama, even when they're a big favorite against another elite team. And more often than not, they do wind up cashing with those plays. Uh, you know, will we see sharp action coming back on Clemson? Maybe, as you said, probably we'll see a two way action. But uh, where do you think this line will close? Do you think it'll go up and then close back down at, at close to seven? I, I think we'll see a split line by kickoff. Mm -hmm. I, I think there will be books that still have a seven. I think there will be books that may be seven and a half or even higher. Um, and, you know, from the early indicators, Alabama's taking more bets. Alabama's likely to be the more public side. And of course, you know, when you look at a history of, you know, let's just say the last 10 national champions, 
teams like Alabama win titles. Team like teams like Clemson don't. You know, they tend to come up short in games yeah. like this one. And and it's very clear when you look at the list of recent champions. Uh, I should say programs like Alabama as opposed to programs like Clemson. And, of course, you know, Alabama has many of the key statistical profiles. They've got the best recruiting classes. They've got the most overall NFL talent. Uh, They've got the defense. They've got the dominant line. They've got the Heisman winner at running back. You know, uh, Alabama's got a lot of the stuff that both squares and sharps like to see at this time of year. So uh, I would anticipate that Bama money will continue. I don't know if it's going to get this line above seven everywhere, but I'm convinced uh, that the shops that cater to recreational players will will likely move this line to seven and a half before kickoff. All right, and then let's quickly touch on the total. I'm actually a little bit proud to say that when I saw it open at 53 and a half and I jumped on the under right there. Now it's uh, down to about 52 and a half or 52 market wide. I've even seen that 51 and a half. Uh, so the, the, the total clearly going down. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to hang on to that bet, but, uh, you know, Alabama's uh, championship games have actually uh, been a little bit higher scoring than the markets have, um, have anticipated. Uh, what's your take on the total? Well, not the championship game against LSU. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, that, game, uh, was the, that under was never in doubt. Um, my take on this total we, is, is certainly Alabama correlates with under. You know, the Crimson Tide are here in large part because their defense is as dominant as it is. If Alabama is capable of doing to Clemson what they have done to many other teams this year, Clemson's not, you know, going to struggle to get two touchdowns. Uh, and particularly when it comes to red zone. Clemson, Clemson has had red zone issues all season long. Alabama's red zone defense has been dominant. Uh, and, you know, if the Tigers are held to 20 or less, uh, this game's got a pretty good chance of staying under the total. That being said, the correlation with Alabama and under, I think, uh, goes just as easily with Clemson and over. Mm-hmm. When we look at the type of offenses Alabama's defense has struggled against, It's been the spread option attacks with mobile quarterbacks. That's exactly what Clemson brings to the table. Uh, And uh, I think that Clemson and over, there's some correlation there as well. So in my mind, side and total in this game are are pretty clearly correlated. Uh, And uh, obviously the books aren't going to look at it that way. So uh, (laughs) it's an opportunity to cash a two-teamer instead of a one-teamer, depending on uh, your betting opinion for this one. All right, Teddy Covers, thanks so much for your initial thoughts on Alabama Clemson. I'm sure we'll probably uh, revisit this game with you later in the week. Thanks so much, Teddy. Looking forward to it.